Hey, hey everybody, we're back. This is Dear Will Christian. Thank you so much for stopping by on this evening. Well, today we are going to be sitting down having a conversation with Mr. Virgil Walker from the Just Thinking podcast, G3 Ministries, as well as um, one of the contributors to the new movie, Uncle Tom 2. So if you don't mind, um, I am kind of waiting for him. We have a couple of little technical difficulties. But if you don't mind, if you are here on the YouTube and you would be interested in asking a question of Mr. Walker, I do have some questions to ask him as well. But if you wanted to ask some questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. As I always like for you to do, just use the word question, maybe with an asterisk in front of it or asterisk. Um, you know, put a big Q or whatever like that, just so we know what it is that, or rather, that it is in fact a question, and I'll get those kind of lined up. So when uh, Miss Walker gets here, we can uh, have a little conversation. It should be fun. And thank you all again. I do deeply appreciate it. So while we're waiting, let's do a couple of quick housekeeping things. I see um, recognize another Christian YouTube content creator in the building, as well as my good friend Mike from echoes if you have an opportunity please feel free to support other christian content creators so like recognize right here i know he would love for you to check out his channel and what he's doing over there please give him um a like share and a comment all that kind of good jazz but uh rico if you don't mind just drop your uh your name in the chat with your with an asterisk or something right there so everybody knows who you are here's a uh, mike from echoes again Echoes, another Christian content creator. We'd love to have you check him out as well. I'm going to just put a star by that question, Mike, and be ready when uh, Mr. Walker shows up. And I want to thank you all again. Uh, let me see. There's another question. Perfect. So I want to thank you all again for your support of what we're doing here at Dear World Christian. It's it, highly appreciated. I thank you so much for that. And if you wanted to, if you're interested in... Um, engaging with me on buy me a coffee i'd be happy to have you there as well the information is on the bottom of the screen uh, for you to check me out on buy me a coffee which is just my way of um the way if you would like to contribute and support this ministry what i'm doing and the activities here you're welcome to do so there and uh, i think i have a guest here today let's see who this is what is this is this what do we have here grace and peace my friend how are you We can't hear you. It's a conspiracy, man. It's a conspiracy. Because you're already going to get, you already, you know I'm a Morehouse man, so you're already going to get the business about being being late. So just go and get ready for that. But also you can't say anything. I can't hear you, so oh, I can talk smack to you and you can't say anything back. Oh, man, I got a captive audience. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. It says that you're muted. Let's see if we can unmute you. Why are you muted? How about can you how say about, something? Go ahead, talk. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. There you go. What's happening, Virgil? How are you? Hey, brother. How are you, man? Look, I I thought we were we were six p.m. Eastern. That that is totally on me. And then I looked at when I checked in, it was five. I'm like, I'm an hour late. No, no, it was it's six. Okay, well, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, three, I'm three minutes late then. You're three minutes late. All right, so here it comes. Because since you kind of thrown off my show, uh, April from Standard of Truth, she's my Spelman sister. She knows that I'm, I'm super antsy about being on time. So here it is, um, Mr. Walker. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to help us out. Okay. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask a question of the audience, and whomever is the closest to the right answer. Mm -hmm. I need you to send them a book. Oh, I got that covered in space. You got it got covered? Okay. Yeah. So here is the question. But here is the question, everybody. How many bow ties do you think Mr. Virgil Walker owns? <laughs> <laughs> How many bow ties? <laughs> and at the end of the show, I need you to let me know. You, um, might, you, you, might, you might want to do the person that gets the closest to the to the right answer. Yeah, I get you know, let's go with uh let's go with a range. We'll go with uh give or take by ten. Yeah, that'll work. All right, that'll I'll give work. give or take by ten. I got somebody already right here. They're going with a hundred. Uh-huh. I actually took a video of my bow tie collection. I was gonna play it. Oh wow. <laughs> I got <laughs> I don't know. I, matter of fact, I think that's a good question too. Who has more? Me or Virgil? 
Ah, I got quite a few. Working from home is a mess, though. It messed up my bow tie game. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, come on, Pete. I'm sorry, Pete. I'm sorry, Pete. No, Pete. I done seen that many. I done seen that many in the guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I love it. Oh no, there's some serious. Uh, I need to put a star by these. Let me let me star these, yeah. and we'll uh, we'll come back at the end of the show and yeah, talk you, about it. Virgil, you want to star that one? You want to star that one? <laughs> I'm probably giving stuff away I shouldn't. All right. Oh, there's some good questions for you too. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, there's some good questions. I, now, I, now, Virg I watched your interview, man, with John Harris. Man, it was so, it was so great i mean it was so butter i thought there's no way i'm improving on that so I, I won't promise to be nearly as articulate as as both of you were during that particular interview man let me tell you something john harris man I, I, he, he can't come on my show anymore because <laughs> i had all these great questions you know the questions i send you i had you know kind of get you ready like these are questions i ask you yep. man he incited the dog on uh comment section and all my questions went out the drain oh. I yeah. went back and looked. There were seven questions I still didn't ask him. But you uh, know what? The interview was far better <laughs> than if I had done him anyway. So great. maybe I'll let him come back. Maybe I'll let him come back. If he if he acts nice, maybe I'll let him come back. <laughs> <laughs> How was your day today, my friend? It was busy, man. Busy. Got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of things happening around here. And so I'm going to change microphones right now. How does that, does that sound any better? It does sound a little better, actually. Okay. Yes, thank you. I, I, I put I put my my, my lapel, lapel on. I wanted to get a little bit of a closer closer sound to you, and I love that it. Kind of thing. Um, man, it's just busy. I, it's crazy. I'm uh, about fourteen days away from uh, from our our not even fourteen, probably more cl closer to twelve days away from our uh, conference in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it, this is the time when it's just around the clock. I'm still here in my office. Uh, probably will be even after we get done for at least another hour or so. And uh, it's 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 12 hour days until conference time. So, well, I appreciate your time today. I want to let you know that. Thank you so much. Bro, um, anything for you, man. Well, bless you, man. Thank you. I do want to let you know you, you did let us down because nobody knew who you were because you didn't actually have a bow tie on. So they're like, so you must be under witness protection or something. They're like, who's this guy? We always see him with this handsome smile and a bow tie. Like, who's this dude over here? Like, he kind of, sort of, but we don't really know who he is. So they're like, yeah, I get it. I get, I wasn't sure who I was when I left out this morning. So <laughs> there's some days it happens, man. It happens. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, I did ask a question. If you if you're just jumping in, my question for Virgil is how many bow ties does he own? If you want to um, guess, throw your um, answer in the chat. We'll uh, reveal the answer at the end. So. Um, all right. You know what? I think this is a real good question. Just to kind of get us warmed up because okay. we are just kind of talking to you. Virgil, who in the world are you? Bro. I mean, you're an anomaly. I mean, yes. like, wait, tell us who you are. Well, I, man, I appreciate the question. I am just plain on me. No, nothing, nothing big, nothing special. I, I, someone who's been, been just saved by God's grace and blown away by, um, and how God has used uh, the, the ministries that that I've been a part of over the course of, of the last really five seven years or so, uh, grew up uh, and in uh, upstate New York. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's that's something people don't don't necessarily. Know. I would never. I wouldn't have said that. Yeah, I grew up in upstate New York, Utica, New York, and uh, moved to Oklahoma. I tell people I got there as soon as I absolutely could. Um, <laughs> grew grew up there, high school there. Uh, left there to go to college uh, in Arkansas, of all places. Right. Okay. Um, three years of college there, did not finish, uh, came home, military. Most people do it the other way around. Most people mm -hmm. go military, you know, and, uh, and then they go to school. I went to school, yep. then I went to the military. And so uh, did, did the Air Force for about six years, uh, mm -hmm. came back home, finished my degree, worked for a pharmaceutical company, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, uh, where I would eventually become a manager, sales manager, uh, managing teams all across uh, the country. Um, and, and then I... Um, I moved to Omaha, Nebraska with a smaller company called Daiichi Senkyo, big, big Japanese based company uh, there. Loved what I was doing there uh, for a season, but just felt in, in just in my heart. I'm like, man, I, 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 I was kind of at that point in my life, brother, where where I knew ministry was calling and had been. It's, it's, it's something I've been running away from for quite some time. I've got a pretty eclectic uh, 
background as far as as far as religion and and faith is concerned everything from kojic churches and and we, we've had some of this some of this stuff in common uh kojic churches pentecostal mm-hmm. churches uh charismatic churches word of faith churches and you know the, the whole nine yards and, and i could man i could tell you crazy some crazy stories uh going to carlton pearson's church there in um uh, wow. tulsa oklahoma uh, for quite some time. And, and uh, so if anybody is familiar with that, there's a Netflix uh, a movie called Come Sunday, and it's about his life. And, and uh, I, I was there when all of that was when all that was transpiring for him, Old Roberts University, all of that. Yep. Uh, long story short, uh, I would eventually move out to Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I met my wife there in Tulsa. She was a student. Tulsa, at Old okay. She was a student at Old Roberts University. Uh, we were both attending Carlton Pearson's church at the time. Um, okay met her uh man she 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 was an, an amazing woman and uh have you have you met my wife yet i met her at um when i came out there yep yeah i met her yeah, yeah. Um, wonderful amazing, woman ma- thank you amazing lady that you that you don't forget um she's a, she's an absolute joy we have three amazing kids adult kids uh my daughter mm-hmm. princess uh she's in omaha nebraska still where 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 we were before we made this trek um and then um, my oldest son is there with with uh, with his sister uh, Princeton. So they are 22 and 20 and 20, about to be 21. So 22 and 20. They okay. stayed there in Omaha, Nebraska. My youngest son is with us. He's 18, just graduated from uh, yep. high school last year. Um, I was working as a, um, what was I doing? I was working as a discipleship pastor at Westside Church uh, there in Omaha, Nebraska, for about six years, and mm-hmm. um, loved what I was doing. Left left the pharmaceutical industry, finished up my MBA, bachelor's degree, MBA, all of that. Done, did check the box on all that. Was making great money, and decided that man, my life would not be fulfilled if I had not pursued the the call that 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 I'd been running from. So eventually, uh, bowed the knee to that, and. Uh, um, like I said, six years in, in a ministry there at a traditional SBC. Uh, before I got hired, this is interesting. Before I got hired, I, I was I was reformed, uh, mm-hmm. five point Calvinist, uh, but the church was not, and uh, I, I submitted to the pastor's leadership there, and uh, did did what I did until the opportunity came where the our the podcast, the Just Thinking Podcast, yep. explodes onto the scene, and then all kinds of doors began to open from speaking opportunities to uh, co-authoring books uh, to the job opportunities that both Daryl and I have Daryl being out at uh, Daryl Harrison being out yep. in uh, at, at, out in at grace to you working for the ministry of John MacArthur and this door of opportunity opening up for me here uh, in in Douglasville uh, Georgia with, um, with with the G3 ministries and dr. Josh Bice. so that's that's a that's a way around the block uh needless to say but that's that's no. the story i'm sticking to it i love it i love it okay so what i'm interested in hearing because this is off the cuff as well sure. how did you how did you come to reformed theology i know for myself i the lord started pricking my heart um because of the purpose-driven church that i was attending the speaker in charge there was you know as purpose driven does tend to attract a lot of um, error and a such like that and, and lack of accountability. And I was really starting to be bothered by that. And I had, I tell the story that I have a friend who had started asking me some questions about a tried and true biblical doctrine that everybody believes in. And he said, you know, that's not in the Bible, right? That's what you talk about, man. And I, I got mad. I got angry. Yeah. Virgin, I went and grabbed that Bible and I flipped that joke open and said, see, it's right here. He said, well, yeah, that's in chapter three. Why don't you start at chapter one? It's, there's only four chapters in it. Why don't you just read the whole thing? I read the whole thing and I was angry. Wow. I, I was, tears were in my eyes, one, because I was like, I've been duped. Yeah. Also, I was like, God, thank you. And then lastly, the question I started asking is, well, if you lied about this, mm-hmm. what else were you lying to me about? Yeah. And that was, as I told uh, John, like it was just like the little door cracked a little bit and a little bit of light came in. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, and that's what the Lord used to start me on the path of finding reformed theology. What about yourself? Yeah, man. I, I, and I'm interested in your story. I mean, I'm interested in, I'll, I'll share, I'll share a little bit, bit, bit of mine, but, but, but I, I learned, and I did not know this uh, during the last interview that, that you, you, you're, uh, you, you're, you're Presbyterian. Yeah. I am Presbyterian. Yes, sir. So, yeah. So like that, I wished 
even in the last uh, interview, you had gone into into that a little bit because that that's that's rarer still for 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 blacks anyway. You know, for for, for especially for folks who come from from the circles that you and I come from uh, in particular. Um, I, I'll, I'll gladly tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm curious, man. Tell me. Here, let me move our pictures. So now you're interviewing me. Let me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now you're interviewing me on my show. How did, where do they do this at? People did not tune in to hear Jason's story. Well, I'm, I was, I'm just curious. So I tried house church. When we left the purpose-driven, seeker-sensitive church yeah. that we were at, I tried to do church at home because I realized that the past, the speaker at the church that we had been attending, he wasn't actually giving new sermons. He would just teach the same thing month, I mean, year over year. Wow. So he taught in February this, the next year in February, he was teaching the same thing over again. Yeah. And so on and so forth. And I was like, I could do this at the crib. Right. So I tried it. It was a mess. I couldn't get the girls from out of their bedroom to come down to the living room. Yeah. I'm like, it was terrible. And at that point, my daughters were attending a Christian school at a little white Presbyterian church. Mm-hmm. And I, we tried everything. I was like, babe, okay, fine. We'll go over here to this Baptist church or this right. uh, whatever church. And it was a, it was a mess because I didn't want anything that even remotely rhymed with Purpose driven. If they ever did, did y'all ever preach a sermon on a movie? I'm not coming. I mean, it was really that bad. Right. And I said, well, let's go check this place out. Cause you know, the girls go to this school at the church and we like what they're doing. You know, we don't know much about it. And all while I had been starting, I had been introduced to stuff like um, sermon jams. And yeah. cause I, I didn't know much about Johnny Mac or Paul Washer or Vody, all these people, but those sermon jams, I was like, wow, that's kind of, okay. That's kind of neat. Yeah. And I had started listening to like, um, John go through the book of John. I'm like, wow. Like it is like a hundred sermons. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is serious. He's going line upon line upon line. Like I can. And the thing I really liked was that the fact that I could come and catch you at a coffee shop and tell you about the book of John yes. line upon line upon line, yes. not Hey, let me tell you about my pastor's vacation. Let me tell you about, you know, all these other maturations in a movie or whatever is really about the scriptures. So all this is happening in the background and trying to get these girls to go to church. I'm like, God, we're supposed to be in a church and I can't even make it. So then we said, let's go check out this Presbyterian church. And it was a culture shock. I'm not going to lie to you. I think the median age there was 80 at that time. It was, it was wild. Um, there weren't a lot of little chocolate dots in the, in the rice bowl. Let's just be honest. Okay. Um, they weren't keeping it away. They weren't saying you can't come in here because you're too dark. Right. They just weren't, they weren't appealing. Right. So, but I sat there, you know, you stand up, you sit down, you stand up, sit down. And a couple things that really stood out to me because my pastor and I, we do a podcast together once a week now. Wow. And one of the things, one of the things that stood out to me was the pastoral prayer. Yeah. Um, when I realized that he was praying for people literally that were sitting on my pew. Yeah. You know, we're praying for, you know, Betty so and so. You know, and I'm like that's Betty right over there. Like, wow, that's serious. And then the sermon. When he preached, it was, it was like Mark chapter five verses three through eight. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this is expository preaching in living color. Like, wow, this is powerful. Right. So the next week, my wife wanted to go somewhere else and something happened with the girls. So we didn't go the next week. But then the third week, I said, let's go back and check out Smyrna Press. Lo and behold, guess what? He was in Mark chapter five, <laughs> verse wow. 28 through whatever. I mean, like literally he had not skipped a beat. I was right. like, nope. So I sat down with uh, Joel. We had a good conversation. And, and the joke is I'm waiting for you to mess up. So every couple of years, every couple of weeks or so, I talked to him. I said, hey, you still ain't messed up yet. Wow. <laughs> so. But that's how I got to uh, Smyrna Presbyterian. Wow, man, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Well, I'll, I'll share with you, uh, man. That's a great story, and um, it, Praise God. You know, it's not it's it's not much different. I mean, we we have very similar stories in that regard. Um, for me, it was I was at that you know at that SBC church, uh, enjoying you know what I, what I knew. Uh, I had finally gotten to the point where. Um, there was a there was a, a guy, gosh, and I wish I could remember his name, um, who came to the church. Uh, he was a he was a former Muslim, who okay. had, who had come to faith in Christ. I wish I, I wish I, I'm looking back because I I think I've got his book in my in my bookcase somewhere. But I, I listened to I listened to uh, him at our church, and he was you know he was talking about why he had come to saving knowledge of Christ. And uh, it was because he, he, had, he had endeavored to prove uh, the Bible wrong. 
And uh, I was just like, you know, man, that's incredible. And, and here I had, you know, my wife and I were at this Southern Baptist church thinking, you know, we'll teach our kids, you know, how to speak in tongues at home. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. You know. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a gift, but we're going to teach them how to do it at the house. You know oh, what I'm saying? There you it's go. <laughs> so, so uh, I was just intrigued by that. And uh, I, I kind of went home and and, and just began, I, this was the first time I was ever exposed to apologetics and, and, and what it meant to defend the faith. Mm -hmm. um, and so, man, I just started absorbing as much content as I could from that one Sunday morning when he had, you know, he had kind of laid out some of the biblical reasons why he had, he had, you know, come to a saving knowledge of Christ rather than his belief in Allah. And uh, I started studying, studying, studying. And I'm just like, for me, the experience of, of doing that was just like, I mean, it was almost a renewed uh, awakening in, in my spiritual journey. You know, I don't want to Amen. say I was born again again, but uh, but but man, it sure it sure felt like that. And so that 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 wasn't that wasn't uh, a landing in the in the in the into the reform camp. What it landed me on is kind of what, what happened with you with it, with expository preaching. Mm -hmm. uh, it was understanding that that the, that the word of God was actually active and living. Uh, yes. and, and, and that it had it had more to do with what we were dealing with on a day to day basis than than some old dusty book that we you know dusted off once a month and, and opened up as we attended church. However, often that that took place. So I went from there to, to just absorbing as much content as, as I could uh, in apologetics, started you know finding websites like Carm dot org, yes. you know, uh, you know, answers in Genesis and you know, looking for you know, all these different things that I was just kind of feeding my, myself with. And the more and more I kept studying, the more and more I was running in, into these guys who called themselves Calvinists. And I'm mm -hmm. like, who are these guys? And, and who are you guys? Yeah, who are they? And so ran into James White. Um, I, I'll, tell, I'll tell you who helped me kind of overcome a lot of the a lot of the uh, word of faith stuff. And that was Justin Peters. Um, yes. And so his ministry was a big help in, in coming out of a lot of the word of faith stuff. Uh, the person who kind of moved me into the direction of reform theology was was James White and okay. um, and everything that I read read from him. So I'm 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 getting there. I'm getting there. And sure enough, I'm, I'm like I can't. I don't have the brain power to manage uh, what White is is doing with with the text of scripture. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him on the shelf and <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm gonna figure things out on my own. So I put him I put his stuff on the shelf and and then a, a, a former Catholic who's attending my traditional Southern Baptist church, mm -hmm. uh, it takes me to, takes me to, uh, to, to coffee. We, we sit and chat and I'm always kind of like you were talking about earlier about going and having coffee with people. Um, I, I would always try to find the, the older, wiser men in, in whatever circle I was in and, and do that kind of thing with, well, he hands me this book, uh, from RC Sproul called what is reformed theology. Yep. I have it right here. Yep. yep. And so I, I, I devoured that in about a day. And uh, it, it, I just, I just, I absorbed it and never looked back. I was like, oh, this is, this is it. I'm, I'm on it. This is me, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then, and then got into, you know, getting online and, and engaging people and having conversations about, about theology and the like. And so uh, that for me, but the crazy part was I was never part of a reformed church. Right. Uh, this, my, it's only been, I've been here in, uh, in, in the ATL area in, in Douglasville. Uh, for um, about 18 months. I got here in June of, uh, this is 2022, 2021. Yep. I got here, I, we finally landed here in June of uh, late, late May, early June of 2021. And, and prior to that, I, you know, whenever I was in town putting things together for, for G3, you know, I, I would attend church here at Praise Mill. Yep. This is my first time in a, in a seriously reformed Baptist church. Okay. And, uh, man, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I, I understood reformed theology. You know, mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was leading at, at a church. I was a discipleship pastor there for, for six years, loved what I was doing. I was attending, um, uh, seminary during the time attending Midwestern while going through that whole process there. Um, but this is actually the first time I've actually been in a reformed church enjoying reformed, reformed worship. And, uh, man, I, I love it. Absolutely love it. Amen. Amen. All right. So let me, because um, your questions have been coming fast and furious. So let's okay. go ahead and respect some of the sure. questions that have been coming sure, for sure. you. So from Echoes, he says, has there been any isolated type lonely moments being a conservative? 
Wow. And I might actually just add um, of the highly melanated sort. So not just a conservative, <laughs> but a black conservative. Yeah. You know what? I've, I've never uh, I've never considered it like in that way. Um, man, like you, brother, I just I don't I, I've never I, I maybe how I'm wired. I've always been a contrarian. I've never really cared about what others thought even before even before coming to saving faith in Christ. I just did not care what mm-hmm. other people thought about me. And so uh, conservative, I, I, I would, I, you know, I, I, I would say probably where I landed in that framework first was politically. So, okay. so here I was politically, I was conservative. I was on radio um, talking about, you know, political conservatism and, and what that meant to me uh, for quite some time. And so I, I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't care how many people looked like me or didn't look like me that, that agreed with me. So you know, I, I never, never voted for a Democrat. So I don't, I don't have the story of coming out of this whole, you know, uh, you know, democratic or liberal mm-hmm. or, or progressive kind of ideology. I've just never, I've never been there. Uh, have a you know, military background. Maybe that had something to do with it. I think my parents had a lot more to do with that than anything. Just both of them hardworking, um, serious about, about, you know, never, never thinking that, that my ethnicity was going to keep me down. I mean, I, I, no, no one ever taught me that. So right. I didn't learn that. And then theologically, I think, I think as, as I came to saving knowledge of Christ, I, I, again, I just took the, I don't care right along with me and only, only added, added additional strength to it from a standpoint of, of, of being, you know, in, in, Landing on landing on true truth, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> landing, right no, I'm landing with on, you. Landing on the solid foundation of the Word of God and just not really caring. So, so no, I, I don't. There's no isolated moments. Uh, I'm I'm connected to the people. The, the the people who are a part of my uh, of my tribe, my family, my crew are people that are serious about their faith, serious about the truth, and just don't care. So, you know, you you know, folk, folk, folks like yourself, brother, folks Amen. like you know, uh, uh, our our sister. Uh, I, I I don't I just those are my people. You know, right, those, right. Those, those are my people. I love it, man. Thank you. All right. Let me see. Um, so Rico just give you a shout out. He said he's been waiting for this Virgil Walker in the building. He woke hey, me hey, up hey. for sure. So, um, yes. And of course, I'm trying to um, also let you all know if you are a Christian content creator, please make sure you drop your um, name of your channel in the chat so we can make sure we check you out and follow follow you. I'll drop that down there for you as well. Right. All right. Thank you so much, Rico. All right. There's a couple of. Uh, votes on your bow ties oh yeah and if you are late if you were late rather if you would like to jump in and let me know how many bow ties you think virgil owns so uh please feel free to, and uh there will be a we'll let you know at the end now rico also asked did you graduate from hbcu if you don't oh, wow. have <laughs> oh i didn't read the whole question oh if you don't if you don't oh, have yeah, a bow tie. that is actually probably more true than it's than than not like yeah we do like my first i got my first bow tie from my college roommate in in college in 93 wow. Wow. so i will admit i will admit uh it's not really it's not etched in stone but that's actually funny and i'm gonna share that i'm gonna call him and tell him that so this will come back funny. up again uh I had that one sorry about that all right so question what are some of the goals for g3 network do you think it will ever evolve into like a denomination that's a great question thanks for, the, thanks for the question Preaching for God's glory. Um, I, no, I, I, I can answer that definitively and very easily. No, it won't turn into a denomination. Um, however, I think there'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of things that denominations do that we'll endeavor to try to do. Um, mm-hmm. G three Church Network. If you're interested in something like that, you can go to g three min m i n dot o r g forward slash network. So g three min m i n dot o r g uh, forward slash network and learn all about uh, the, G, the the G three church network. Um, it's it's a phenomenal group of brothers who hold to a, uh, a you know the the sixteen eighty nine London Baptist mm-hmm. with with a, with a few carve outs. Um, you know if you, if you, there, there are people who don't believe that for example that that the Pope is the Antichrist. Uh, <laughs> there are some people that 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 don't that that don't hold to a you know a, a Sabbatarian you know I, idea of. Mm-hmm. of of, of, of church practice on Sunday. So there, there's some carve outs there, but, but for the most part, we all hold to those things. And in addition, uh, we hold to the statement of, on social justice and the gospel. And so those are the commonalities that, that, that connect us, that bind us. And then there are a lot of additional things that, that we do. I'm trying to plan fellowships and, 
opportunities for pastors to, to gather together, to, to, to come together, uh, even in our uh, geography in our area. But for now, we have a monthly, monthly phone call, uh, a, a Zoom call that we connect with one another on. So we're talking to each other. We've got a number, a ton of resources uh, that we provide both uh, uh, for, for free for the most part or okay. at the reduced prices for those who are part of our network. Every conference that we put on uh, is discounted for our G3 uh, church network uh, members as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they hear about projects first um, before anybody else. In fact, we try to get feedback from them as to what, they're, what they want and need. Um, in addition, uh, we've got you know, mission opportunities, uh, mm -hmm. church planting opportunities. Now, the network doesn't plant churches. Churches plant churches. Uh, but, but those who are, like, let's say, a church, for example, uh, Praise Mill is, is working on a church plant uh, in, uh, in, in Tennessee. Uh, mm -hmm. So what they've done is they, they've connected. They, they are part of the G3 church network. They've connected with, with other network affiliates who, if they are, they're interested, can support uh, financially, prayerfully, and otherwise can support that church plant. Um, and we'll take in uh, others who you know, want to do the same. We have a, a church, a board, uh, a, a, a literal board where people can post uh, projects that they're working on. So there's just a lot, of, a lot of neat things, not to mention all of the content, the, the curriculum that, that, that's being developed uh, for folks so that folks aren't having to go to Lifeway. Uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're trying as, as quickly as we can to, to develop content material and then with the studio that you you were here for our studio open fantastic studio yeah. we are we are about to we are about to have a ton of additional material and resources teaching tools podcasts interviews it's going to be crazy uh, you'll want to be a part of the g3 church network uh, you know for, for no other reason than all, all those great resources that i just mentioned okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in then because this is not necessarily a question just thinking y'all gonna do a, a video podcast Absolutely. That's, that's what's going to be happening. That's, that's yeah, what we need. That, 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 was, that was the purpose for, we, we, we have a co-branded, uh, uh, you know, studio, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just thinking, uh, in, invested, you know, a, a nice chunk into what we have upstairs. Uh, and as a result, we're going to, we're, our, we're uh, probably early next year, uh, not probably early next year, yeah. uh, uh, Daryl will be coming down and, and the, the, uh, the just thinking podcast, Will be will be recorded live there in that space, so you get to see my interactions with Daryl, Daryl's with me, and and all the content that you've come you know become used to, uh, that you've listened to uh, in a, in an audio format. You'll see it in video form. I love it. All right, we're going to jump through a couple of these comments and questions. So somebody said, um, "Great job on Uncle John, Uncle Tom too." I do want to talk a little bit about that too. So sure. I want to. Um, sure. I want to talk about your engagement in that. I did watch yeah. the movie today and it was a uh, top, top shelf, but I do have some questions. I want to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, April has got jokes. Yep. Virtual sold drugs. Lots of them. Sorry, man. I know you I expected did, I better. Would, I tell, listen, <laughs> April, April, April ain't telling nothing. I don't tell on myself. So, um, I, I, yeah, I was, I was the dope man back in the day. And, oh, no. uh, I, yeah, I sold, I sold pharmaceuticals, legal pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, to physician. So that was, in fact, that's, that's what got, got me started with the bow ties. I was, a, I was, I was managing a team of nine people across three states. And uh, I, I knew that my time for that was coming to a close. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really wanted to step away. And, and this was, this would lead me in the direction uh, where I would eventually uh, walk into, into ministry opportunities. Uh, and so I, 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 I told my boss, I no longer wanted to be the manager that I wanted to be a sales rep. Um, he looked at me like I was absolutely insane. But what it did was I could, because I was managing a team of nine people across three states, when you handed me a territory where I could go home at night, a lot of time. I had yeah. a lot of additional time. And what that provided was uh, it, it allowed me to, to put myself into, into seminary, uh, to <laughs> study the Bible more, and, and, to, and to walk into opportunities for ministry. That, long story short, as a sales rep, what I ended up doing was in an effort to distinguish myself in the geography that I was in, I, I, I put on a bow tie and uh, I, I would go into the offices as bow tie guy. Yep. So what, what, one of the things I noticed, is, it noticed was that, that, that all of the gatekeepers, A, were women, B, were women of a certain age demographic. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those, those uh, I, I won't call them old, I'll call them seasoned, uh, those, those, those seasoned women uh, mm -hmm. loved, loved the bow tie. And so when I was wearing the bow tie, it gave me access to, oh, I love your bow tie. And they yep. let me back. 
So that that was that was you know. So I was there. There was there were you know hundred thousand dollar accounts that would normally take three to six months to get back to. I got back in two visits because I had a bow tie and they thought they 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 liked it. Mm-hmm. So I was known as bow tie guy from that point on. I was I was in bow ties and so that was, gosh, two thousand. 13, I think 2013. So from then on, I've never worn anything but a bow tie. Yeah. Yeah. I got rid of all my long ties. I gave them to my diaconate when I uh, joined Smyrna Press. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I was like, because I only have bow ties now. Yep. So, uh, wow, bro. I wonder if you have more than I do. Oh, brother, trust me. I- I'll send you. I got the picture. I bet you do. <laughs> Hold on, let me pull it up. We we we've gone way off the rails. This That's this okay. show has lost. <laughs> this show has lost all credibility. I mean, the, I'm pulling it up. So let me pull up another question while we're doing that. Yeah, Here's yeah. a good one because this is something I kind of wondered too when I saw when I met both of you. Yeah. How did you meet Daryl? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. We we met. Uh, we we were we do, were doing the Just Thinking podcast for two about two and a half years before we ever met in person. Wow. And so we, we had never met and, and think about it. We didn't have, we didn't have, we didn't even have what you and I have right now. We didn't have that. We were just on audio and uh, we used kind of Uber conferencing to jump on. And um, yeah, we, uh, we met through Dwayne Atkinson, our, our dear hey, brother, yeah, Dwayne. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, hardest working man in podcast land. And uh, he called me after an interview with Daryl. Look at that, man. Hold on, call, hold on. Yeah, yeah, bring that back up, bro. So here's my bow tie collection. That's nice. Oh, I got I, I mean, got a few of those. I've got a few. I've got, in fact, uh, I've got a number of those. Yeah, that's it's nice. so bad that I actually have some repeats. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm like, oh yeah, I bought me. I bought me three new ties and I look like wait, I actually have this one. Yeah, yeah. So like this Marvel one right here, I actually yeah. bought it twice. Yeah. We've got we've got, right, some, let me we've stop. got some of the same taste, man. Yeah, I've got I've got some of those same some of those same ties. Well, All right, so I, yeah, so go ahead. I'm sorry. No, de, de, uh, so that we met through uh, Dwayne. Dwayne. Dwayne had interviewed Daryl one off, okay. and uh, he called me immediately. Said, "Hey, I met this brother. We talked. Man, I love his writing. You need to read his stuff. Um, you guys are very similar in the way that you think about theology and articulate things, and so." You know, he just encouraged me, said, man, you know, you need to you need to get a hold of him. You need to get in touch with him. So I said, absolutely. I didn't have a podcast at the time. And so I, I asked Dwayne, he was generous and he just said, hey, why don't you why don't you use my podcast, you know, format platform. So I, I went a second round with Daryl and just did an interview and mm-hmm. uh, and the chemistry was just there. Felt like felt like just two brothers who, you know, had had hadn't met in a long time or had, you know, hadn't connected in a while, uh, picking up right where they left off and. Uh, we just had a good time. What was supposed to be an be an hour, you know, an hour long. I know his 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 was thirty minutes. What I think what was supposed to be thirty minutes or forty minutes turned into about an hour and a half. And um, I, I told the brother he 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 was such a great writer. Uh, I told him I said, listen, I've got yes. some experience in radio, and uh, if you want to do something in the, in the podcast space, man, I'd be happy to come alongside you and help. Uh, I did not want to be lead for two reasons. One was I was at a traditional SBC. And mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't want to offend anybody with how reformed I really was. Um, <laughs> so that was part of it. And then part part two of, of that was just, you know, I, I really wanted to, to help him get his voice out there and, and push okay. it out. And so uh, with that, I mean, he, he has no problem now, that's for sure, uh, getting getting his voice out. But um, yeah, that was that was kind of how we met. And then two years later, as he's out in out in uh, California, California, why mm-hmm. we get the we get the call from MacArthur that that uh, that they wanted us to come out and do a live episode of our show uh, at the Truth Matters conference there. And so, um, I mean, I, as you can imagine, I'm floored like my hero. Yeah. I've been watching this guy for 10 years now and and. Mm-hmm. And I get the call to come out and do it, you know, to do a podcast there. And so Daryl and I would meet there for the first time in person. Really? Uh, okay, there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. And the rest and the rest is history. That is what's up. Okay. Thank you, man. All right. So K Dub wanted to know, um, do you think there's gonna be any racist surprises at G three this next session? Oh, uh <laughs> I hope not. We we'll definitely be on the lookout for those. Um 
I don't anticipate that. For those who don't know what, what he's talking about, um, there, there was a guy that came to the last national G3 conference yeah. um, and, and show, just showed out, uh, just showed out. He'll, he'll remain nameless. I don't want to give him any publicity, right. uh, but, but came and, and uh, snuck in. You have to wear a badge. You told everybody that from the beginning. He doesn't have one. He was asked to go get his badge like we would have done with anybody, regardless of their ethnicity, um, because of the fact that the person that asked him to go get his badge was white. Um, uh, he, and he, and he was not being compliant. Um, he, he, he charged that it, it was a, it was a racist issue. Now I saw the whole thing unfold. Mm -hmm. So I jumped into the middle of it and just said, Hey, you know, what's, what's going on here? Um, you know, he tried to, he tried to give me the whole, you know, uh, you know, I, I poor pitiful us kind of routine. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I heard I'm, the story. So yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. And, and, you know, and, and brother, man, you, you know how, you know how victimized we are type thing. And I was like, no, nah, go get your badge. Go get your badge, <laughs> so, homie. You know, and uh, when, when he didn't want to do that, I just said, hey, we're going to have to usher you on out. And apparently, come to find out, he had snuck into a previous uh, uh, G3 conference and did the same thing. So we, we afford all of our, um, uh, our discounts, our books, mm -hmm. and all those things to folks who paid the, the, the registration price uh, for, for access to those things. We work out special deals with with our booksellers for the folks who come to our events and so uh you know he was trying to take advantage of that without paying the the, the price one and two you know had it had he registered had it, here's the other piece here's the crazy part if he did if he hadn't if he'd have rolled up on me bro and said hey look i did not register i would love to come i would love to attend um you know what, what can you do? I probably, you know me well enough. No, I probably would have just hooked him up. Yeah. I, I've seen a reason why you wouldn't have. <laughs> right. Right. But, but, but when, when you act a fool and, uh, and show you behind, well, then that's, that's, it is what it is. So there you go. I love it. Thank you, man. All right. You kind of addressed this one. So I don't know if I necessarily need to say it again, but is the G3 network friendly to Calvinistic Baptists? who do not adhere to the 1689, at least not yet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, absolutely. You can make, uh, you can, if you have, um, you know, issues that you, that you take with the 1689, I mentioned a couple of them, um, you know, the, the, the Pope maybe not being the, the, the Antichrist, the Antichrist and, right. and then the Antichrist, maybe a right. an Antichrist, but, um, but if you don't agree with that or, 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 um, or an issue around, uh, you know, the Sabbath, uh, you know, and, and, and the manner in which it's, it's, it's uh, presented to be practiced in the, in the 1689, the London Baptist Confession of Faith, we, 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 we would be open to hearing those or whatever else you would present. Uh, we, would, we would be open to, to checking those out. So the other thing is w uh, what we're doing is there are churches uh, like the one I came from that are mm -hmm. traditional Baptist churches, uh, but there are pastors who are, 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 you know, Calvinistic, uh, soteriologically, um, and, and, you know, and they would love to join, but, but they, but their church isn't fully there yet. Hasn't fully embraced, you know, doctrines of grace, hasn't fully embraced other issues. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll partner with those, with those church pastors and say, Hey, absolutely. We'll, cause we, we want to provide you resources that will be helpful, um, you know, and, um, you know, engage you. And, and so that, you know, so that you're not a pastor on an Island. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll you in, the, in those regard and in those respects and uh, uh, and make things work. We've done that with, with particular churches as well. So I love it. Appreciate it. Now, I don't Now, when I came out to Praise Mill, it was on a Saturday. You were doing an open house for the, the tour yeah. of the new studio and the new wing and yeah. such like that. So what is the demographic of the actual physical of the actual church on Sunday? Yeah. You know, what does it look like? Yeah, it's it's I'd say, gosh, man, they're they're. Uh, they're more they're more uh, ethnically diverse probably now than they were when I first came. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a predominantly white church uh, ethnically. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say about eight ninety ten something 90, like that. Okay, okay, yeah, about, about so, ninety ten. Okay, and so the historic uh, restoring hero project ask uh, question: Being a chocolate in a bowl of rice, do you find it hard to connect in church? And I want to, I'll give you a second to kind of go process because I've been ready to answer this one. Sure, so, you know, when I came to Smyrna Press, it was heavily um, white. It was, you know, less melanated. I will say this, I because I, my daughters and I joke about this quite often. I do think that 
when a, a family comes in and they are comfortable being there and they're not like looking at people sideways and why you sing like that? Why don't y'all clap and all this other stuff? When you don't come in there like that, it does cause other people to relax and feel comfortable. And then it's like, oh, yeah, this is my brother. This is my fellow deacon. This is my deacon mom and so forth. Um, and then from there, it begins to emanate and you end up attracting more people. So um, because my mother attends church with us and she's in a wheelchair. Wow. So I joke about it that I sit, they, they, they make me sit in the back of the church. They don't make me sit in the back of the church. I sit in the back to sit with my mom so she can sit with her grandkids. But um, brother, that is beautiful that you have your mom with you there. That is yeah. beautiful. And it's a blessing. So, and, and the thing is, everybody knows her. Everybody knows that's Belinda. And sometimes they say, oh, that's your son. So it's not even like they like, oh, that's Jason's mom. Right. Or they just recognize oh, she's brown. He's brown. They must relate it. But I noticed week upon week, we get more and more and more diverse groups. So um, Presbyterians do attract larger families. Wow. So it's not uncommon to have a, an Asian family with four kids pop up right. or a Hispanic family. And, you know, uh, they take up the whole bench, the whole right. row. So it's not uncommon, but I've noticed that over the years since that we've been there, that it's actually becoming more mixed yeah. and they're not doing anything extra. That was the other thing. They didn't do a Kwanzaa celebration. Right. They didn't do a national <laughs> Korean appreciation month. Right. Nothing right. like that. They just right. continually did what they did yep. they, um, and, and love Christ, make much of Christ. If y'all could season the chicken some, I wouldn't be mad, but they love it. And that's it. So. I love my family, my church people. That's great. No, that's great. So, no, I, I think I think that's spot on. Uh, did I find it hard to connect? No, I, I never. I don't really connect with people on the basis of my ethnicity or you know my skin color. Uh, man, I, I connect with you if you if you love God and you're passionate about that. Uh, man, when when Jason, when you walk when you when you came through here, man, I just I, I had an immediate connection to you, uh, immediate, and and my heart was knitted to yours the moment I saw you. Um, praise God, it, praise it God. Had, it had everything to do with 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 your just gregarious disposition. You you who me? I'm just so introverted. <laughs> with, I with, came in there and I was I was I was on full ten when I came in the room. So yeah, he, he was he was he was on ten. But but <laughs> the thing that I loved was well, two things. One, my wife is 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 on ten normally. So that I, so that was that you was know what I can. Yeah, tens that, recognize yeah, tens. Yeah. I, I I felt that. Yeah, yeah. that was a, that was a connection point for me. And and um, you know, once I think, once I learned who you were connected with, I was just like, dude. And and you know, the work that you've been doing in the social media space Amen. is just commendable. Um, love loved watching. You know, the the, the stuff that, that that you've been been doing. Um, you were you were a man of God. Love the Lord. We're here to celebrate. I love you. I mean, and when I saw you, when you left, I, one, I didn't get enough time with you because I, I was spread so thin in so many different places. Um, and then two, I just wanted you to know whatever you ever needed from me, man, I, I, I'm here to connect with you and, and try to make happen. I said all that to say, um, I, I just connect with people. If you're authentic and real, uh, you were you were one of the most you were, you were one of the one of the people who I would say is so comfortable in his own skin. Uh, yeah. and, and I and I don't mean that from a standpoint of ethnicity. I just mean as a person. You came into a foreign space, um, doing you, being you, and um, and I man, I when I when I run into people like that, man, I'm like, oh yes, that those those are my people. Well, praise God. Well, next time I'll bring the dynamic duo with me, and you'll be like, good gracious, alive. There's three of them. <laughs> 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 You'll say, "Great mercy, man! How in the world are they? How do they have three of them?" Yeah, because my big girl and I—it's like a joke for us. Like we're like, "How how out of control can we be in public?" Yeah, well, you won't. The thing is, our folks here—they they don't run from that. They lean into that. So you won't. Amen. You won't have. Yeah, the, uh, Josh Bice, Doctor Josh Bice, mm -hmm. he, he, he leans into that. So he's not. Nobody's scared. No, ain't nobody scared over here. Ain't nobody. You know. <laughs> no, I loved it. He was he was extremely gracious. He was very kind. So I, everybody I met there were extremely welcoming, gracious. I will say, if it didn't take me a whole tank of gas to get out there, y'all probably would see me more often. So let's just. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a small car. I'm like, great mercy. April, hey. April calls it. April calls it what? West West e Jerusalem. E I think West Jerusalem, East Jerusalem. Yeah. It be changing. <laughs> 
sound like April. You just said, you just said it was West. Now it's East. How, right, what's right, going right. on? <laughs> so do you find, why do you think it's so hard for people to leave the word of faith movement? Mm. I think it's a uh, great question. I think it's difficult for people to leave in the way that it, it is in any kind of um, situation. You find relationship, you find friendship, uh, you're connected, um, you're, you, you're, you're used to a certain uh, dynamic, a certain, um, you know, e ecclesiastical expression. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, you, you, you're used to, you know, certain, certain, you know, that, 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 that uh, you know, the, 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 way, the way we sing, the way we call, the way we call, you know, the, the, the shout and call. The, I mean, just di oh, yeah. different things that you begin to get used to that it, it makes it difficult for you to leave. And so you don't, you don't want to go. And, uh, uh, but but I, I normally find once people do recognize that that uh, that they're sitting in error, um, it does it usually doesn't take long. Amen. Yeah. It, once I realized it, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. It wasn't a word of faith; it was more attractional with a little sprinklings of charismania in it. But yes. All right. All right. Some of these questions you've already answered. <laughs> Why are TV commercials like 70% pharmaceuticals? They make a well, lot of money and they spend a, a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they make it. a lot of money. I mean, I remember when I was when I was in was in the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, one of the one of the uh, you, you want to get into an area where you can, you know, you can go up the uh, up the corporate ladder and make as much as some family practice physicians with simply a bachelor's degree, selling pharmaceuticals is the is the way to go. And, uh, and, and as you can imagine, you know, they, uh, they, they make, they, you know, they make those companies make a lot of money, 15 years on a patent, you know, you're making, I, I mean, I, I sold most of the drugs I sold were, were, uh, were, were mega drugs like, uh, like Zoloft or mm -hmm. I, I actually launched Viagra. Um, I, so, I mean, the, the, um, Lipitor, I mean, big name wow. Celebrex, big name, billion dollar drugs. And you've got these on 15 year patent life. So every year, you know, I, I had a, you know, I had a, I, I want to say, I, you know, my, my quota was, you know, 1.5, 1.7 million for one drug that I had to make sure to go get. And um, so it was, it, it's, it's, uh, they make a lot of money, a lot of money. Wow. I love it. Well, we're going to hurry up because I do want to talk about Uncle Tom too. Sure. So do you think the overturn, due to the overturning of Roe v. Wade, do you think that the population of black America will now increase since Roe held the black population down with the murder of black babies? What do you think? Yeah. Man, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, again, with the overturning of Roe, all that means is that the decision defaults to the states. Mm -hmm. um, the Dobbs decision did not did not cancel abortion. But what it, as, as people are screaming from the top of their lungs, um, you know, as as uh, uh, Stacey Abrams would have you to believe um, women, women can still get abortions mm -hmm. um, and, and people like Abrams um, and, and, and others, uh, Warnock and others, other blacks are advocating uh, for the killing of their own children in the womb. And, um, you know, it's just absolutely amazing. I wrote that. In fact, you, you covered yeah. one of the articles that I did, uh, let, letters to, uh, to black, black pastors, um, you know, where, where we, we, we black culture, not all blacks, but black culture is so steeped in a, in a cultural and a cultural death spiral. Uh, that it that it really it's it's really going to take uh, going to take the the power of the gospel uh, and an act of God uh, to 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 turn that around. Uh, it is it is it is deep within us. Everything from the music that we listen to, where we're killing ends and shooting yep, ends yep. and doing this to ends, uh, to to how we talk about our our, our women, uh, to how women care less about men uh, and and want to and, and and the and the the, the height. Of, of womanhood now is is the, the closer she can be to acting like a man, both sexually and violently, um, and, and in every other way. And abortion is a is a is a big part of that. So uh, when you have from the pulpit a lack of truth being being you know being being given, uh, I don't have a great deal of hope uh, that things will turn around. Apart from those of us who know the truth, proclaiming it loudly and boldly, and 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 the hand of God having impact uh, on the hearts. Uh, of those who are who are in darkness.
Amen. Thank you. Let's do this one. And then I'll, I want to get into Uncle John, Uncle Tom, too. I don't know what's wrong with me. So how can the church get involved in black inner cities? And I'm just going to say inner cities, period, because there's Latino inner cities and so forth. Uh, what has worked and what has not worked in your yeah. mind, in your opinion? Yeah, I, I man, I'm horrible at answering that because I have no idea. I, I don't um, I, 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 I think you, you know this about me, or maybe you don't, or maybe you, maybe those who are watching don't. I used to do, or I did a ton of street evangelism. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I was at, at, in front of abortion mills. I think at, at an abortion mill, uh, I was at an abortion mill weekly for about five years. Um, and, and I want to say that was the time when I would run into most people who look like me. Yep. Um, that, 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 those were the spaces and places. And so I didn't, I didn't go to the abortion mill to say, okay, I'm going to save black people. Um, I, I just I just went there just because God, you know, placed it on my heart to go and do. And and I went and did and, and proclaimed the gospel in those spaces uh, with the hope of two things, seeing babies saved uh, and seeing and seeing the, the women who had planned on murdering those babies there come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so um, that that was that was my hope uh, for me. It wasn't I'm going to go save black black folk. Right. Um, at, the, at the same time, like you, like like the, 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 the person who asked the question, um, I, I, I long to see more people who look like me come into uh, the, 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 the truth of the light of the, the, the light of the truth of the gospel that, that you and I have embraced in joy uh, that, that has detached us from the idolatry of our of our ethnicity yes. right? uh, has, has detached us from, from from the idol of thinking uh, everywhere I go, I've got to count the number of black folks in the in the space before I feel comfortable. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I no longer possess that. I'm grateful to, to the Lord mm -hmm. for that. Um, uh, I, I, like you, brother, I'm, I'm, I feel great in my own skin wherever I am. And uh, if you have a problem with me, that's your problem, not mine. Uh, but but, but as, as it pertains to inner cities, uh, I'm saying if, if you have the light of the gospel uh, and God is, is, is pulling you into those spaces, go deliver that message. Uh, I, far be it from us to be pragmatic in our approach, uh, 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 you know, I think we just go and share the truth um, and, and allow God to, to deal with the results. Um, yes. it, it, is, it, is our, it, is, it is our goal uh, to go and, and, and be obedient to declare that truth uh, in, the, in the highways and the byways of where, where we live. Um, and it's, it's God's responsibility at the end of the day to, to turn those who he's called unto himself uh, uh, through the proclamation of the gospel to, to see that heart transformation. It's not my job to... to to go figure out how many I, I, I was on um, uh, Jason uh, Whitlock's show, yeah, uh, and 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 we had that he ha he constantly asked. I think I think we've closed near about every segment with him asking, "Hey, do you think that that folks will end up here? Do you think folks will end up turning around?" And I said, "Man, I, I don't know. Uh, truth be told, my my job and role is just to be obedient to go to go share it. Uh, it is it is you know the, the outcome is God's, and and I leave that up to Him." And uh, my joy is in, in the fact that he's he shaped my heart in such a way that I have a desire to go do and that I actually am obedient to go do that. That that's that's all the that's that's the full measure of the joy that, that I experience in that. I love it. I'm going to because there's a couple of the YouTubers and myself. We were having this discussion. Something that I noticed, if you don't fully embrace and are 100 percent comfortable with the fact that God is sovereign. And he's going to do whatever he wants to do. Right. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. And you know what? Jason Terrence Whitaker is perfectly fine with that. Yeah. It makes it so much easier for you to look at a problem and do what you can. Yes. But recognize that, yep, um, that, that, la that final push, that final mile, what do they call it? The last mile when your oh. utilities come to the cor from the cur curb, that's going to be on God. But I can yeah. do everything that I've done. God told me to do this. I'm preaching the gospel. I, I, nope, I can't make the person get saved. Nope, I'm not going to have you pray the sinner's prayer. I'm not going to have you uh, sprinkle water or dunk you in the bathtub. I'm not going to do any of that. The Lord is going to have to regenerate your heart. But you have to be very, very, extremely, super comfortable and, and embrace the idea that God is sovereign. Yes. And so as I look at my brothers and sisters, um, my alma mater for crying out loud, God is sovereign. God is sovereign over this. And so yeah. if you're not comfortable with that, then if you don't believe that God is sovereign and that you have to do something, you're going to get out there and just make, make a fool of yourself. Absolutely. Bro, you said a mouthful right there. You said a mouthful so, right there. And there were a couple other questions. 
Okay, I'm gonna get this last one because I think this was a really good one. How would you suggest navigating the woke work environment who requires retraining all employees to affirm the alphabet mafia and other leftist ideologies? That is, a, that is a fantastic question. Um, Daryl and I were recently in, um, gosh, where were we last week? Um, we were in Raleigh, North Carolina, okay. um, and we were doing a Q and A very same question came up. Uh, it was, a, it was a teacher, uh, who's in the public school system, um, who asked about whether or not, you know, with all the woke policies, with all of the mm -hmm. LGBT, Q I Z to a, you know, ampersand to fourth, question right, mark to the fourth. Yeah. yeah. All of that. Um, they, they were trying to figure out how, how do I navigate? And, and what I, what the, the, the straight up question or the straight up answer that I provided her was be prepared to get out. Yeah. Be prepared to get out because they, they you know, there will, there will come now for me, I could not stomach sitting through uh, a session where someone is telling a bunch of folks, you know, unbeknownst to anything that they, uh, unbeknownst to knowing their background, their history, or anything that they've done, that they, that that because they're of their white skin, they're racist. I I couldn't. I mean, I, that and 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 that and that blacks by 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 virtue of their skin color are all victims, um, right. and, and 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 are so weak, are so weak uh, that 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 we can't stand to hear. Uh, uh, any kind of a pejorative or anybody say anything like, like I was thinking about today, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the girl, Rachel, I think it's Richardson. Who's uh, the, the, the Duke volleyball yes. player yes. Uh, who, who supposedly heard a racial uh, slur that, that was aimed at her. And, and, and first of all, I think she's lying. Um, and, 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 and I, and I, and I, and I challenge anyone to, 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 I, I posted, I, I posted it up on Twitter. I said, Hey, if mm -hmm. I'm wrong, uh, send, send me the video. But, but until then, this is, this is, this is the small letting, of BYU. That's all, that's all, that's all that, yep. that this is. But get, getting back to the question, I think that there will come a point at which you'll have to, you'll have to draw the line and say this far, no farther. Uh, I would encourage people to, to do um, things that, that generate revenue stream, income stream for them, for themselves um, at, at the point at which they're going to have to make the decision to say enough is enough. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not willing to capitulate on this issue and for different people, it will be different things. And so I think far be it from us to say, here's what that looks like, A, B, C, D. And if you, if you see these four things, then it's time to get out. You know, I think, I think it'll be a matter of Christian conscience. Um, right. But, but I do think you, you'll need to be prepared uh, with, with a, with a, with a plan of action for, and, and, and then, and then, to, and then to be willing to trust God, you need to be prepared for what it looks like for you to leave your job or find some, some form of employment. That, mm -hmm. don't, that, that doesn't have those kinds of requirements. Brother, you, you, you were going to jump in with something? No, no, I, I agree with you 100%. And it, it, I think it just goes back to the sovereignty of God. Like you recognize you do, you're doing everything you can. You're, you're trying to be faithful as an employer, taking care of your family and such of that nature. And just uh, you're ultimately trusting God. So that would be my little two cent. All right, I'm going to take, I'm not going to ask any more questions. So what I want to do is, you ready? Yeah. Tell me about Uncle Tom too. What was it like? Tell me about your participation in that. Yeah. I watched it today. What'd I you have think? some. I, okay. I, I would love. To, I would love to hear your feedback because I, I, you know, I, oh, I know okay. what we did and I know what that was about and all that. And I'm just curious. I haven't had a chance to to talk to many people who have watched it, who saw it, and, and there's it's, and there and, there, and there, there are a number of thoughts that I have about it. Knowing your background, knowing your training, knowing knowing what you're aware of. Uh, I, my thought was a lot of that was old hat to you. Uh, maybe, maybe good, no. good reminder, but, but go for mm -mm. it. I, I can't wait no. to hear what you thought. Sorry. There was a, okay. Um, I, I just watched uncle Tom too this morning. I want to make sure I was versed in it before I sat down with you. I said, that would make good sense. At least you're in the movie. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. The movie I felt was extremely well done. Wow. Extremely well done. Um, I, 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 I told somebody, it would be a, a whole weekend video if you were going to sit down with your your liberal family. Yes. So we're going to watch. We'll watch twenty minutes on Friday. Yes, duke it out. Yes. <laughs> we're going to watch. We'll watch an hour on uh, Saturday. Duke it out. Right. And then on Sunday we'll go to church and pray and watch the last twenty minutes and duke it out again. Yep. Yep. I, I felt like it was it was extremely well done. My only pushback, I know this is weird, yeah. is that it flowed almost too smoothly. Hmm. 
it was uh, there were moments I looked up. I was like, wait, they're not talking about Marxism anymore. Yes. Oh yes. man, they're talking about this. Yes. And like there wasn't like a clear break between yeah. like like if you would call them chapters. I needed yeah. some chapters in it, and it might be just because it was on the streaming, mm -hmm. but it was so smooth. He just transitioned from one thought to the next, nice and smooth, and it wasn't a break. I was like, oh man, he was talking about you know weather yeah. underground and over here. And, oh, wait, now they got over here. How did they get there that quick? Yeah. And it was just too smooth. So I needed like a break between yeah. it. I know there was a couple little segues in there, but those didn't do it for me. However, the material was outstanding. I really, because I just so happened to, to do a little bit of research on Booker T. Washington this week. Yeah. Eyes were completely opened up. And I've always wondered, why was there always this Du Bois versus um, Booker T., yeah. what you call it? Because, you know, I went to Morehouse and I was like, wait, you know, they got a Du Bois dorm, but they don't have a Booker T. Washington dorm. Right, and I always wondered that. Mm -hmm. So here, so that that really helped me see. Like now, oh, now, you, man. Got, now you got an idea. Yeah. Like now I know why we don't have a, a Booker T. Washington dorm. Yep. But we do have a Du Bois dorm. But anyway, um, and just understanding some of that background nuance. I'm like, wow, man, the guy was literally a slave, and y'all call him a sellout. Yeah. <laughs> like how does yeah. that even work? Yeah. How does that even work? Yeah. So. I thought that the the movie was extremely well done, very clear in his message, very clear. So I, I understood <clears throat> from what he was from the beginning to the end, what he wanted to get through. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that it was uh, I was kind of bummed with some of the language that they they had in it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but I was like, I, you know, I, I, showing... I want to write that down. So I want to remind me. I want to come back to that. OK, the language. And I was like, man, I would love for him to had bleeped that out, but I'm like, no, they really, it was, it wasn't like they had a, a pastor up there preaching and, and cussing in the middle of a sermon or something. They were showing riots and, and unrest and such like that. And I was like, yeah, I guess that, yeah, it kind of makes sense. But I was like, goodness, because it was, it was extreme. <laughs> there was a moment I was like, wow, there's a lot of uh, cussing up in here. Yep. So, um, but no, I, I, no pushback in, re in regards to it being, uh, I, I thought even the pushback of, um, um, the Black Wall Street yeah. and the narrative that's always told. Yeah. I think he does a great job of explaining like, this is how the narrative, the, the big narrative, this is the little tiny event that led to that big narrative. Like again, like the, the, um, the Black Wall Street massacre or, yeah. or whatever they call it this week. Yeah. Yeah. And just how that mushroomed into something way, way out of proportion. Yeah. Um, and that, and that, and that, that area came back. Like I, I lived in Tulsa, right? You, you did say Tulsa, yep. yep. Yeah, and I and, and I, I I knew that the area came back, but but I I also knew that the that the narrative of, apart from those of us who did know that was that 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 the city never recovered uh, from that time frame, and and that Black Wall Street was never able to happen again. And, and I and I, I knew that was incorrect, mm -hmm. but 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 you know you're, you're a lone voice when when the narrative has been has, has been pushed forward. Uh, to everybody else and, and so I was, I was happy to see in the movie that that, that they addressed that so and so yeah i think that it was a fantastically done very very clear um picture of what um the director's vision was i i totally understood it so i think that was um that was outstanding so what, what do you have first of all you should have chad jackson uh, the, the the brother who's 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 kind of the main character you should have mm -hmm. him on your show um, I'll, 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 I'll get you, I'll get you connected and, uh, you should, you should definitely have him on your show. Um, Chad, Chad reached out to me and Daryl. Here was the thing. I, I heard about uncle Tom too. Uh, mm -hmm. I watched the first one, loved it, loved it. Uh, thought it was great. And again, I told you my initial political leanings had been conservative since I could, since I could vote, I've never voted for a Democrat in office okay. ever. For, for for a for a uh, for, for presidential office, so I, I, I that was my life. So watching Uncle Tom too was like my my political experience in in, in life. Um, I was I was you know I was Republican before Candace Owens thought about being you know all of these people who are now you know uh, Brandon Tatum all them cats you know those are that I'm not, I'm like welcome to the family bro come on come on through you know um, so so couldn't wait for the second one didn't know what it was going to be about Daryl and I in January of, I want to say 2020, I want to say January, 2020 okay. uh, was when we were down, we were in Florida 
and uh, this was before the before the COVID outbreak, and Bodhi Bodhi came through. We were we yep. were at a comp we were at the conference there. Uh, Bodhi came through. This was the first time I had met Bodhi before, but this was the first time uh, the popularity of our podcast was such, and we were in some spaces and places where we were not going to be able to work together with some of these folks. And so it was. I was really I, I was trying to be real cool, like oh, yeah, it's Bodhi. Yeah. You know, we just, you know, we're gonna do what we do. Well, right. Bodhi, Bodhi had a camera crew with him. And uh, I was like, I mean, I'm, I know the dude's popular, but like a camera crew, like, like oh I, yeah, you know. And so, sure enough, I, I I then learned that it was, you know, it was Chad uh, Jackson and, and and some of the producers from the Uncle Tom Two series. And so, okay, as we were there, um, Chad knew who we were from again the Just Thinking podcast, mm-hmm. and he had talked to the other producers, kind of got them up to speed on who we were, Daryl and I, Daryl and me and said, uh, man, we, we would love to interview you guys. And so we were like, cool. So literally we get into this room and, and it's, it's hot seat. Like you sit down and, and they're like, okay, what do you know about? And it's like, it's like the historic run through. And off the top, like you gotta, you oh. gotta know your history. You gotta know oh, yeah. what you So it wasn't like a, okay, here are the 10 questions we're going to ask you. And then you can talk, it wasn't like that. Uh, it was, you know, t- t- what, what do you know? What do you know about Selma? What do you know about this? What do you know about Marxism? What do you know about? I mean, dude was pinging, um, and we there was about both of us did an interview for about an hour, an hour and later. Wow. And, and we were add-ons on the back end of this whole thing with Bodhi and everybody else. Bodhi was the last person that 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 they were trying to cover. They had all the other material. Bodhi was the last person to cover, and so we got in on the tail end. Um, when I talked to Chad, I said, Hey, Chad, listen, you know, I would love to help you in any way we can and what have you. Let's stay connected. So we stay connected. And the, and the movie was supposed to come out almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And it kept getting pushed back, kept getting pushed back. And so I said, bro, what's, what's going on with it? Not because I cared about me, my role. I I just, I love the work that he was doing. He and I over the, over the course of time had had become friends. Um, he, He would travel to places where we were speaking, where Dallin and I were, so it, it became, you know, it became a, a yeah. relationship. And so, you know, I was just trying to root for him and, and root for the for the project. And um, he said, well, he said, we've just changed directions. And I said, how so? He said, initially, the first one was about kind of the political Uncle Tom. Mm-hmm. This one, he said, it was really going to cover my theological kind of journey as I ran into, um, you know, different people uh, who were telling me about their faith and how, and he said, and I read in the Bodhi stuff, I heard you guys' stuff, and I realized that this, this whole conservative thing doesn't just have a, a, a social political component, but that it has a spiritual component. Correct. And I said, absolutely. And so he's like, so we're going we're gonna to trace that, and, da, 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 da. and I said, cool. So I said, well, however I can help. Well, I, I, it would be a long time before we would touch base again. And, and as this was coming out, he called me to say, hey, it's taken on a totally different direction. And I said, really? I'll Okay. He said, he said, we have just uncovered just the whole trajectory of how Marxism uh, has invaded black culture um, and how it's turned it on its head uh, and how we've adopted all of these ideas. And, and I said, OK, uh, he said, I want to send you the episode or you know, the, the whole thing early. Yeah, so yeah. I, wa- I watched it before they put all the finishing touches on it. And I and he, ca- he called and said, I want your feedback. So I, I, I told him, I said, listen. This is totally different mm-hmm. than the first one. And yep. I said, if you, if you don't explain to your audience the journey you're about to take them on, they're going to think that they're, they're, they're getting some candy corn kind of pop culturist Uncle Tom thing, and, and you're going to lose them. And, and I, I said to Chad, I said, I said, you've listened to Just Thinking. I said, you know we do three-hour-long you know, episodes. Yeah, yeah. I said, this is the video version of that same idea. I mean, it, it is shot. It is packed. In order, in order to pull all of the all of the meat off of the bones of that movie, you're gonna have to watch it a dozen times. Easily. 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 Because you're gonna have to write down people, names, time frames, and then go do the research in depth on what he uncovered in that movie. There is nothing out there like what he did. And, um, and so I just, I just thought it was, it was absolutely 
amazing. Um, I, he, t he called me, he said, before you watch it, I know we interviewed both of you for an hour. Two things, you guys were on the tail end. And two, um, he said, uh, I, really saved, I really saved a lot of your content for Uncle Tom 3. And I said, okay. really? He said, yeah, there's going to be a third one. And it really covers what we talked about, which is the spiritual journey out of all of the chaos. And, uh, and he said, you know, we, we would love to have you and Daryl back and we'd love to interview you again. I said, listen, I, I'm, I'm happy to provide whatever value you think I provide. <laughs> no, you provide much value. You don't even try it. Well, I mean, the heavyweights. I mean, you got, know, you got Bodie, you got Carol Swain, you know, you got, I mean, it's just, it was, it's packed. Uh, you got Ben Carson. I mean, come yep. on, I mean, seriously. Um, you know, I, I said, what you, I, I get if you're trying to land the plane on a, on a particular, uh, on a particularly theological kind of landing point, I get why you would have a, a Bodie, a Daryl, a Virgil, you know, and some others that, that, that help you, that help you go in, in, in that direction. But anyway, I, I was, I was honored to be a part of the, the, the role that I played and, and the voice that I got to lend uh, mm -hmm. to the storyline and the narrative of, of that whole piece. Um, you know, it was, uh, it, it, it's, it's an amazing, it, it's an amazing film. Uh, it is. I, would, I would just encourage people to go grab it, take it off the shelf. It, it's, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, 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 com, a running commentary, a, a running cultural commentary on black culture that, that you, you won't believe, you, you can't believe it. I mean, you just won't be able to believe it. Something, because there, there was something else I remembered. I, I, I never thought, like it, it totally went over my head how uh, prosperous many black people were post-civil, yes. post-civil war, post-slavery, yes. yes. uh, moving up, moving forward into the early 1900s. Yes. Like, wait, they really weren't podunk. Uh, no. Not, no, they really weren't. No. Now, were there, were there struggles? Were there... Yes, absolutely. No question yeah. about that. But no, they really weren't. Yeah. However, we we've when when they show those pictures, like um, there's a gentleman who did a a, a, a book. Man, don't you pull that book up because I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna, right now. I'm gonna come. I'm driving out. I'm gonna fill up my gas tank and burn my tank of gas. Yep. That that book right there, the true the true likeness. If you go look, grab that book. Yeah, bro. I'm telling you right now. Hide that book because I know where your office is. So I'm just letting you know tonight it might be a thing. I'll know, I'll know, I'll know who has it. So it's all well, good. Wait. Oh, I just said this online. My bad. <laughs> but no, just the, the pictures and the images. I'm like, wait, these people didn't look podunk. These people, no, no these people. No. What when happened you, when to? You, when, you, when, you st when you go back and, and look at some of, the, some of their stories, uh, some, some of these folks and, and their story, bro, just. Just these, these the, the images. I had thought. I, like, what I year thought, is that? What year are those? Like those those ladies right there. Does, uh, does 19, 1920, 1920. You would think somebody would say. Can you see that? Yes. Nothing about that. Like again, that nothing about that scream. Uh, uh, we're lesser. Nothing about that screams. We're struggling. We oppress. We need freedom. We need. Anything, I'm, and I'm, I'm like, I'm getting because of that. I'm I'm getting ready to write an article. I just I just wrote wrote down some notes. Uh, I, I I'm getting ready to write an article. I was I was walking back through. There's a there's a uh, a blog article that I just wrote about education not long ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, and I've been way too busy to 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 write recently. But I've been I've I've got this this idea brewing in in, in my hip pocket. I was <laughs> looking at education and looking at education, particularly in in, in black communities, and how so many of, of black children are not doing well academically. Mm -hmm. uh, I juxtapose that to uh, to to the the the, um, oh, uh, the issue of uh, what's Ruby's Ruby's last name? Um, Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges, right? Here she is. She 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 was not poor. She was an, uh, academically strong. They 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 bus her uh, to 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 the white school. And uh, and she's there, and again, she that that that's the one with the iconic image of uh, mm -hmm. Norman Rockwell painting, all of that stuff. And yep. you know, she's she's walking to school uh, with the help of of, um, of of folks who are uh, guarding the her National way. Guard. The you National Guard is walking with her, yeah, are, are guarding guarding her way. So this this young lady does well academically. Is I mean, all, great story. Here we are in our current culture with 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 woke teachers 
who are sensitive to every every microaggression that could possibly take place for black students and and academically they're doing they're doing poorly i had in this piece bro i had i had chronicled um uh the the uh, reading um comprehension and reading rates uh of blacks uh from 1870 to 1960. here's the crazy part the 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 reading scores were actually better no no question better from night from 1870 to 1960 than they are today in mm -hmm. our current day and so I, I i did as the more and more stuff i researched the more and more i recognized that some of these things that we thought were helpful for example civil rights uh for example brown brown versus board of education Mm -hmm. uh, in the ways that we thought those things were helpful, they were actually detrimental. Um, Facts. One, 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 one quick way uh, was, uh, was what it did to black schools, what, what Brown versus Board of Education did to predominantly black schools. Mm -hmm. right, right now we're talking about a crisis uh, of black teachers. There, there aren't black teachers in black schools, blah, 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 you know, that, 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 that whole case. Yes. One of the things that, that did away with that was Brown v. The Board of Education. Because while the white schools needed to be integrated, guess what happened to the black schools? They, went they, 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 were, they were decimated. Yeah. But for, furthermore, all of the teachers that were teaching in those black schools, they weren't going to be accepted at the white school. So where did they go? They went gone. And so, yep. so now you, now you, now you have an, an entire culture who, who's devoid of, of what it takes to teach kids who look like them. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, if you want to if you want to make the case that that's what's required for for academic excellence, which I would argue it's not, but let's, let's let's just say let's just say that it is. Well, the, the kinds of things that civil rights leaders were advocating for were actually to the detriment of that of that same uh, of, 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 the, of that same people groups. Anyway, I, I, no, I said I think it's great. Say, I want to I'm, I'm 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 putting together a list of of key civil rights uh, quote unquote wins um, laws on the books that we thought were, were pushed us forward that, that actually did. And I think, I think about the Montgomery boy, bus boycott. I think I've heard you talk about this. No, but no. How we were no. trying to get on, get on black, uh, how we were trying to get on, not sit in the back of the bus. Right. Uh, sit, sit, this, sit in the, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, they mentioned it in the movie. Yes. They mentioned it in the movie, like instead of us worrying about like, we we could have been starting our own bus lines. Well, well, we and, we, we, we did we did we, during the boycott. All those black folks still need to get from A to B. So how did they do yes. it? Well, they partnered together. That look, they had Uber before Uber was cool. Yeah, they did. Yes, they did. Jitney they cabs. Piled, they, yes, they, they did. Piled, they, they piled up other blacks into the vehicles, took them from A to B, and all the the reason the, the reason Montgomery bus boycott was 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 helpful was one was because all of that economic money finances that were going into financing the buses were no longer there right and they were now back in the back in the communities that were that, that were economically depressed and decimated mm -hmm. i mean we, again we had we had uber in in the 60s before uber ever ever showed up on the scene yeah but, yeah. but we, we weren't thinking what what we what civil rights taught us was that we would get value if and when white folks saw us as equal, not recognizing that that mm -hmm. was irrelevant to the fact that scripture already dictated based on Genesis 1, 26 and 27, mm -hmm. that, that, that we're equal in the eyes of God on the basis of the fact that we're the Imago Dei. But that what you just said right there came from the mouth of a man who believes in the utter, complete, absolute sovereignty of God. Well, when you're when you're embracing atheistic Marxist ideologies, yeah. Yeah. you can't believe that there's going to be justice. Eventually, the judge will uh, rule and hit that gavel and give give the final judgment. You don't believe that. Yeah. So therefore, you got to be the judge, jury, executioner, the whole nine, uh, undertake everything. Right. So we got to do that right here because otherwise, you know, it's Virgil's going to get away. Virgil's yeah. going get, to get off and never you know, pay his, pay for his crimes, but Absolutely. you Absolutely. believe, and I do too. And many people in the chat believe that the Lord will ultimately rule that gavel is going to hit yeah. and he's going to call uh, a court Absolutely. And, and dole out the proper, 
yep. punishments. Yep. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, no, but that, anyway, needless to say, that that uh, that movie was a, is a great one. I would highly encourage uh, people to go check it out. And if you, I've got a code. If you want to use it, oh. it's it's um, it's U T the letter U for Uncle U T two, and then my initials V like Virgil W like Walker. If you use U T two V W, you can get thirty percent off on uh on on the movie download so does that work for the um dvd i believe so yeah okay off the hold on i'm typing it in into the chat too yeah ut2 all capitals ut2 bw i think i got it right moderators please make sure i did that right it looks right looks right to me all right i also dropped the link to the book in the chat as well as the just thinking podcast um overall page and we want to make oh, sure that you can that, you can brother. check out virgil and what they're doing excellent excellent work over there um that code did not work for me april said yeah it it didn't there were two days where it didn't work sis but it should every time somebody told me i i circled back with um with the um with the folks that that were putting out the movie and they fixed it now i it may just be you know they, they don't like april but i don't <laughs> Man, don't make me come out there, man. Don't, don't, don't do that, table. I, to, I might be closer to you. I might have to drive out there because I'm already gonna come and get the book when you when you close your when you turn around. Girl, look around, this, it's gonna be gone. I have a lot of pictures in my. You know this. That's great. Of pictures in my office. Yes, yes. There, there are a few of these these stories that are incredibly inspiring that I've I've really seriously thought about trying to find a digital copy of it and putting it up in my office for inspiration. So. I mean, it was a, I mean, that, that's a, they don't do it very often now, like a coffee table book. Yeah. I mean, that would definitely be a, a coffee table book. It's already in my Amazon cart. Got a couple of books in there already. Yeah. But um, Virgil, thank you so much, man. This was amazing. Bro, this was amazing. Time, man. I, I, I mean, again, the time flew. I'd give you as much time as you wanted. Um, enjoy, enjoy talking to you. Whatever you thank got you, going, please let me know. Uh, if there's anything I could do, you or my sister April, just whatever. However, I could connect with y'all. I, I I know I'm always running and gunning, but but just know this, and and you and you should based upon how how this how this happened. If you reach out, man, I, I will slow down and make it work so that we. Amen. Can connect. Thank you. All right, so we got to get the um. Do you want to do the bow tie question? Remember oh, we had yeah, the bow tie. Yeah. All right, so so for those people that are just coming in, um, I ask um, Virgil how many bow ties does he have, and the person that's closest, Virgil is going to send you a book. So what I'm going to ask you to do is send me your email when, we, when um, after he, you do have the number, right? In your head? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm going to drop my email in the chat. So email me. More, I think you've got more than me, though. I'm going to tell, tell you how many I have in a second, too. I, I know how many I have. <laughs> All right. So, Virgil, how many do you have? I've got 41 bow ties. 41. Uh, okay, 41. Oh, I got you under. There you go. It's Rico. Yep. Way to go, man. 41. He had 42. And we said over or under. Yes. Okay. So it's recognized. Good job, man. I got to um, send me your address and I'll, send, I'll pass it on to Daryl. I mean to Virgil, please forgive me. All right. I, I'm i obsessive. I, I admit. I have 146 I bow thought, ties. I could tell, I could tell by, <laughs> by what I saw that you had way yeah. more than I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, thing, I mean. I just wanted, I, my first goal was to have one for every day of the month, right? No so problem that, there. That was yeah, that yep. was the first goal. And then and then after reaching that, I've I've since slowed down uh, and just bought a handful here and there. So, yeah, I've got I've got four I've got 41. And and I didn't mention this. I used to be a school teacher. So, my goal was to wear one like to literally be able to wear one and not have to recycle it during the school year. Wow. So, so that was my awesome, bro. <laughs> So there's 180 days in a traditional elementary school school wow. year. So I was a little short, but um, like, so those are all long ties. But let, but let me, let me ask you this. Do you like, are, are you like me where there's probably out of the 41, there's probably yeah. maybe yeah. 15 or so that I, that I constantly kind of rotate. Yeah. They, they, they have, a, they have a little bit of extra wear and tear on them. Cause I've worn them more than others. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, there's some like that. But for the most part, I tried not to wear them, but only so like literally there was a system. So I have these these racks with them on, and then when I wear one, I put it on this 
rack down here and anything on that rack, I can't take a, I can't wear it until I've recycled through. Yeah, wow, I know. So it's no, crazy. I, have, I don't have a, I don't have a system uh, like that. <laughs> it's a little bit much. It, it's a little bit much. I, wow. I will admit it's a little bit much, but um, no, I just enjoy them. Man. I just enjoy them. They're, they're, I like the way they look. I like the way they're not in your way. You don't have to worry about the long eye catching on something, yep. especially. So how, how, how about you with the beard, man? Do you, do you ever, does that ever trip, trip you out? Are you good with it? Mm -mm, no, Bo I mean, Bodie, no. Bodie has a beard. I've seen him wear, 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 wear the bow tie. Yeah. And so, yeah. Now, I try to tell guys, man, because they always, everybody's always complimentary, you know, and, and you, and you're like, you can do this. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, no, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Um, now, that, now, when I started with bow ties, I had a scruff at a, a five o'clock shadow when I started. There are some bow ties with some beard oil stains on them now. So, yeah, some of them actually have to go to the dry cleaners. But, um, <laughs> But no, besides that, I don't, I don't care. I'm just going to wear it. I love them. That's great. Um, That's great. So, all right. So, yeah, Rico, let me know. And I, I, I got his information, so I'll make sure we pass it on to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody somebody asked me what a great I've got to pass along Chad, Chad Jackson's info to you. Oh, my goodness, please. I would love to talk to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I used to teach first grade and second grade, and I did that for 15 years. So, um, that is it. Brother Walker. I thank you so much for taking oh, the time. The pleasure um, is absolutely mine, man. And, and like I said, anytime I can do anything for you or with you, let's let's get it on. I love it. Before we get up out of here, do you mind just in, in, in a very succinct manner? I know I didn't give you a heads up on this. Could you please just end us with a good understanding of what is the gospel? Absolutely, like, man. Uh, I'd be, I'd, it'd be my honor to do that, man. I'm, I'm thankful to God because I am saved by grace through faith. In Christ, according to Scripture, to the very glory of God, that was only able to take place because of what God the Father did in eternity past, uh, in the sending of His one and only Son, uh, who lived a perfect life, died a death that He did not deserve on a Roman cross, all for the purpose of paying a penalty that I could not pay. Uh, he paid that penalty through His sacrifice, through the, the, the shed blood on the cross, through His death, burial, and resurrection. And it is because of that that those of us who repent of our sin, place our full faith in Jesus Christ, uh, can indeed experience the eternal life that God desired for us, uh, that, that God the Father desired for us, even mm -hmm. before the foundation of the, of, of the world was laid. And so, again, if you are here under the very sound of my voice and you have not repented of your sin and placed your faith in Christ, I would encourage you uh, to do so even now. Uh, this is the day of salvation. And, uh, and so I would encourage you uh, to repent of sin, place your full faith uh, in Jesus Christ so that you, you too can indeed experience eternal life. Amen. Thank you so much, man. Um, please let me know if you just, if you, if you have some new project coming up or you, you have some new blog posts, I'm going to start uh, I'll start making sure I push it out and let people know what you're doing. And yeah, of course, dude, I love the, the when you I, I saw the video that you did. I was blown away that you did it one and you did it so quickly after I had written that posted it. And man, I mean, minutes later, you had it. You had a video. I'm like, man, that was fast. And, um, and let me let me give. So I did a video, um, the tale of two responses. I compared the what um, the Gospel Coalition said about the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and I compared it to what uh, Virgil had written on the same subject. I think I had just done a video about the Gospel Coalition, so I think that, that was one reason why it was, it was a hot take. It was already on my mind. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, your video, I mean, your blog post came up, and I said, this is exactly what we need to hear, mm -hmm. not this tripe of I think it was Jamal Bryant and all these other people lamenting, oh, yep. take, and all this woe is me. I said, this is what people need to hear. So I, I, so I had already done the Gospel Coalition, that video. And so it, it was really just, you know, taking your, your article and really um, yeah. digesting it and such. But it was a great one. I'll actually make sure I put that in the description as well, like the tale of yeah. two responses. Because, yeah. again... There, there, there are two responses. There are multiple ways to look at different situations, but yeah. you did such a fantastic job of, of calling us mm -hmm. to see this from the viewpoint of somebody who believes in the sovereignty of God, somebody yes. who believes that we ultimately respond. I know I'm just going to keep coming back to that thing. No, like we a broken that's, record. that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Yeah. But to, to, to recognize and to see it as um, 
like we, we're going to be responsible to God for this. And you you gave such a just a, such a coherent cohesive coherent description. I was like, man, come on, we got to talk about this. So I'm glad to that I had the chance to do it. I'm glad you had a chance to read it or rather yeah. see it and yeah. uh, and find value in it. Because uh, yeah, what what I'll do, man, is as I get things that I think you might be that might be of interest to you, I'll send them to you before they publish. That way, you can get a first look. And here's the other thing: I, yeah. I, I, not only will I, will I do that. I, I, there's a there's a handful of cats that I that I just send my stuff out to say, hey, give me feedback. You know, um, you know, the Lionel Squires uh, on, yeah. on a, a Jason Whitlock show. I, I send yeah. him stuff. I'll send Daryl my stuff. Um, you know, just a, just a handful of brothers who I, I know, love and respect. And man, I'd be happy to send you stuff and, and just say, hey, this this looks good. Tighten this up, you know, because I, I want to I want to become a better writer as well. So, hey, man, well, I will gladly feel free. I will gladly take care of that. Cool. But um, thank you so much, man. This was an outstanding discussion. And uh, I want to let you I know you got a lot of work you still have to do. So I'm like, man, I don't want I don't want to uh, keep you much longer than that. So let's go ahead and call this a game. Everybody, thank you so very much for hanging out with uh, uh, Virgil and myself tonight. Thank you very much for all of the chats, all the comments and the such like that. And we'll make sure we go through those as well um, offline. And uh, everybody, until next time, grace and peace. Take care. God bless.